thank you all for coming here to my talk. And I would like to thank also MAPS and especially Rick Doblin for inviting me uh, to this conference. Uh, I have an awful English, but I'll do the best in order to try to hopefully you will understand my talk. Um, I will talk about subjective eff effects of 2CB and I will then speculate regarding some potential clinical uses that I think that uh, it should be researched. Well, 2CB is the acronym of 4-bromo, 2,5-dimethoxyphenylethylamine, and it's a compound that is quite related with uh, mescaline. It was first synthesized by Sulgin in 1974, and it was legally uh, available in certain uh, smart shops and uh, in other uh, shops above all in, in Europe and also was commercialized as an aphrodisiac with the trademarks of Nexus, Eros or Performax. And was also used and uh, marketed as an entheogen in South Africa where some traditional healers uh, used to use 2CP in their uh, ritual ceremonies. And nowadays is a Schedule II drug by the International Narcotic uh, Control Board. I don't know the uh, legal status in the U.S., but I think that it is uh, in the Schedule I, but I, I, I am not sure. In, in Europe, it's also in, in a Schedule II. And from a pharmacological point of view, it's a partial 5-HT, 2-AC, and 1AB receptor agonist. Also, it's a substrate and an innovator of the serotonin transporter. The recreational doses in humans vary in the range of 4 to 30 milligrams. Uh, 2CB has been reported as perceptual enhancement and euphoria. And uh, popularly, uh, sometimes have been uh, defined defined as a drug between MDMA and LSD. Well, I will present some published data, some already published data, and some new data of our team. Uh, this was a paper published in Journal of Psychopharmacology uh, with the goals to investigate the presence of 2CB in the illicit drug market in Spain to describe its, pattern, its patterns of use among recreational drug users and to assess its profile of subjective effects. That uh, was uh, the main part of my talk. I uh, don't talk uh, too much about the other two objectives. Uh, first of all, I, w I was involved also in, in a non-profit organization that was named Energy Control, with users can send the, the samples and we analyze them, and also we used to stay in the, in the parties and in the race where we can analyze the drugs. So uh, when we do to, for, that, for this study, first was to analyze the drug material that users uh, was used to send us in order to be sure that uh, what they are responding is to the effects of 2CB. So drug material received between January 2006 and December 2009 was, was tested for 2CB, MDMA, amphetamine, cocaine, ketamine, and common adulterants such as caffeine. After verifying the presence and purity of 2CB, users were invited to participate in the study. Then were contacted those who had submitted samples containing only 2CB and having at least one experience with the material and in absence of other drugs in the last month. So first we use a questionnaire that was specifically designed for this study. It collects sociodemographic data, age, gender, and level of education, prior, prior experience with other drugs, number of consumptions of 2CB, road of administration, consumption context, use doses, duration of the experience, drug source, simultaneous use with other drugs, and satisfaction with the experience. 
We also include a qu three leads of uh, 15 questions to which participants have to give just no answers to ch characterize the experience, acute psychological effects, acute adverse effects, and subacute adverse effects. By example, those occurring without for, uh, for 48 hours of consumption. The items included in the leads were selected from previous studies assessing MDMA and psychedelics. Reports of experience with to be found in magazines and books. Self-reports, by example, the so-called trip reports available on internet websites, uh, Cerovid, Ligaeum, or Blue Light. And after reviewing this material, three of the authors independently elaborated three leads of uh, 15 potential questions that were discussed in several meetings until a consensus was reached and the final 15 items were agreed upon. Additionally, participants were given the option to report any other adverse effects not listed in the questionnaire. Subjects also fill the hallucinogen rating scale and the VESPA that are two questionnaires to assess subjective eff effects of psychoactive drugs. The hallucinogen rating scale has uh, six subdimensions, somesthesia, reflecting somatic effects, effect that is sensitive to emotional and affective responses, volition indicating the person's degree of impairment, Cognition, describing changes in thought process or context. Perception, measuring visual, olfactory, gustatory, and auditory experiences. And intensity, reflecting the strengths of the overall experience. And we also administer the VESPA that have another six uh, subscales, sedation, sedation, psychosomatic anxiety, changes in perception, pressure and sociability, activity and energy, and psychotic symptoms. Responses in the HRIs and the VESPA for 2CB were compared with responses for uh, dextroamphetamine, salvia divinorum, and DMA, and ayahuasca in other studies at our laboratory. Subjective effects data from these studies have been published for the HRIs previously, but not for the VESPA or uh, the AHRIs results in the case of MDMA. This is one some of the most popular pills of 2CB that we receive uh, to, uh, in our laboratory to, to, anal to, uh, to analyze. Uh, over the four-year period, uh, 97 uh, of 3,033 samples were received purportedly containing uh, 2CB. 2CB was detected in 96 samples, the other one was 2CA. 52 were in tablet form and the remaining 44 were in powder form or encapsulated. Two tables, tablets from two different users contained 2CB and caffeine and in one powder sample diazepam was found in addition to 2CB. In 2008, mean 2CB content was uh, 15 milligrams and in 2009 it was almost nine. The principal results were recruited, recruited 52 users who acknowledged it having consumed 2CB at least on one occasion. 28 of the uh, 52 returned and correctly completed questionnaires. Three of the 38 responders reported that the last time they had used 2CB, they had to combine it with another drug, MDMA, ketamine, and LSD. They were consequently excluded from the study to ensure that the information gathered, especially regarding subjective effects, referred to 2CB only. Thus, the final sample consisted of 35 individuals, 27 of whom were male and 8 female. The main age of the sample was 32 years. At the time of the assessment, uh, 25 participants were attending university or had a university degree, and participants uh, showed high rates of illicit drug use. There were quite experienced users, so they were quite qualified also to assess the subject effects of, of the different compounds. Uh, Acute subjective effects elicited, elicited by 2CB, the main one was sense of touch and perception of own body are enhanced, was uh, reported by uh, the 74% of the sample. Also the walls and floor move about in waves. Colors and shapes become more distinct. Uh, sound and music become more distinct. With eyes closed, I can see images, uh, geometrical patterns, shapes, 
And I have intense, an intense feeling of peace and well-being. There are another uh, uh, subjective effects. Uh, the main important maybe is that 20% uh, of the sample reporting, I feel like having sex. Maybe uh, this is uh, uh, the, the reason why it was marketed as an aphrodisiac in the 80s. Regarding acute unpleasant effects, I'll let it sit tight, but uh, to see it, the main one was difficult, difficulty fo uh, focusing gaze, sorry. Trembling was another one. Regarding the residual effect of 2CB during the uh, 48 uh, hours following intake, the main one was involuntary recurrence of the experience. It, this was a very surprising result. Uh, we can speculate that maybe uh, it's because the experience with 2CB was uh, intensive enough uh, to keep remembered along the following days, or maybe the flashbacks uh, have some relationship with uh, the perception symptoms, and as 2CB is a very perceptual, perceptive uh, drug, maybe uh, there is some kind of, the of relationship. So I think that it will be very interesting to uh, study in the future this uh, specific uh, residual effect. I will show the different profile and the comparisons of the different profiles between 2CB and the other drugs that we administered in our laboratory in order to compare uh, the different uh, subjective effects. And this is the profile of 2CB. We can see that uh, for all the subscales of the hallucinogen rating scale, well, 2CB and, uh, increased the scores. So it seems that uh, people have a very uh, solid subjective effects. When we compare with amphetamine, the, the um, symbols filled there in the indicate uh, statistical differences. Uh, there are uh, differences in all of the superscales between uh, amphetamine and 2CB. We c if we compare with salvia de minorum, there, are only, there is only a significant difference in the volition subscale. This means that um, 2CB is a more manageable drug than salvia de minorum. Uh, regarding ayahuasca, there are no different effects, but uh, again, 2CB, uh, people in 2CB obtain uh, better scores in the volition scale and also, this uh, may significance that uh, there is, uh, that 2CB is a more manageable drug also uh, than um, ayahuasca. And at last, with regarding with MDMA, there is a, a difference in, per in the perception superscale of the HRIs. And also, Although there are no uh, statistical difference, there are also uh, different scores in the cognition subscale. But in the intensive subscale, uh, all the hallucinogens uh, scored more or less uh, the same, with uh, quite different regarding amphetamine. Regarding the results in Vespa, again, this is the profile for 2CB. Compared with amphetamine, there, also, there is also a, a significant difference in sedation, by example, or in perception, and also in sociability. In our samples, 2CB uh, showed to be a very sociable drug, but maybe some difference are because uh, uh, the results from 2CB came from a naturalistic study and the results from MDMA, ayahuasca, and amphetamine uh, came from a laboratory uh, study. Again, with salvia divinorum, uh, there are not uh, almost difference in any of the superscales, but again, 2CB shows more sociability. Again, regarding with ayahuasca, there are the different uh, statistical difference in, in sociability. And at last, regarding with, uh, C with MDMA, we found also a difference uh, in anxiety. MDMA showed more an anxious drug, uh, and also uh, less sociability in MDMA, but again, uh, this, may, this may be 
a result of the different settings. Well, the co main conclusions of this study is to see B-display psychological effects that are analogous to those of other perception-modifying drugs, although they imply less impairment and a higher degree of pleasurable effects. And the drug also shows relevant undesired effects which are suggestive of sympathetic activation. Well, uh, in a naturalistic study uh, de developed some weeks ago, I will also show results of the cardiovascular uh, results. Effectively, we saw that there was a, a little increase in systolic blood pressure, also in diastolic bl bl uh, blood pressure, pressure, and a modest increase in uh, frequencies cardiac, in cardiac frequency. Uh, in another study that there are not published data, again, we ask uh, volunteers, people that used to take different kind of drugs in naturalistic context at their homes or at party or, or, or whatever places, uh, that uh, when they are under the feds, they have to pee in a bottle and to fill a little, a brief questionnaire. And we uh, compare the effectively, effectively uh, um, be assured that they took that they uh, took what they said that they uh, already took, and we asked the subjects also to classify uh, the drug in one of three uh, pharmacological classification: hallucinogen, entactogen, aphrodisiac, psychostimulant, and ask them to report the main uh, subjective effects. We see here that 2CB, uh, the, the sample for 2CB were of uh, seven people. Uh, they classified as hallucinogen, five classified as hallucinogen, and one of them classified as entactogen, and another as aphrodisiac. The interesting thing for me, maybe uh, some of you uh, find another uh, interested results or not interested for me is that uh, while five of them score uh, as an hallucinogen, there are only three of them that score as altered perception and only two of them uh, uh, said to uh, suffer hallucinos, uh, uh, hallucinations. This is very interesting for me because uh, I think that uh, the drug users can, are, are quite uh, able to classify the effects of a certain drug in a pharmacological classification uh, regarding the concrete uh, subjective effects. Uh, they know that this drug acts as a hallucinogen, although they have not uh, any hallucinations at all. It's very interesting to uh, see what happens with people that mix, well, the samples are, are, are very, very low, but I can give some idea of, of, the, of, the, of the subjective profile. Uh, when four subjects mix MDMA with 2CB, uh, just two of them classified the drug as an hallucinogen and uh, becomes to be classified as anthantogen more than as an, uh, as an hallucinogen. And uh, they don't suffer hallucinations. Well, regarding the other drug that is related, uh, uh, similar to, to, to CB, well, one, this one subject classified the drug as an hallucinogen at this, and at, as an entactogen also. With 2CD, uh, two people classified the drug as an hallucinogen, but none of them have been suffered hallucinations. With 2CA, there uh, is also a very clear uh, profile. Two of them classified the drug as an hallucinogen, and both of them uh, suffered hallucinations. So maybe 2CA is the more hallucinogenic drug of all this family of phenylethylamines, at least that we uh, have studied. And 2CA have also a, a very interesting profile because uh, three subjects, uh, the three subjects that took 2CA classified the drug as an hallucinogen, and two of them classified the drug as an entactogen. So maybe 
share some similarities with MDMA. Well, 2CT2 is another the other drug that uh, should to score. And this is very interesting also for me. I don't know it for you. Uh, because uh, for acetoxy PT is a tryptamine. And tryptamines have been classically classified as an hallucinogen. And uh, from the four subjects, two of them classified the drug as an hallucinogen, but four of them, the four of them classified the drug as an entactogen, and the fourth of them classified the drug as an aphrodisiac. So each drug uh, is difficult to classify each drug only in one uh, pharmacological uh, classification or category. Something similar uh, happens with for HODEPT, but lose, lose uh, some entactogenic effect. And the last one was uh, apiperacin that only one subject reported to have, and we analyzed and uh, effectively was MCPP, and uh, was classified as an hallucinogen. Well, uh, the main conclusion also is that uh, almost all these research chemicals, all these different phenylethylamines, are, are tryptamines, are classified by the subject as hallucinogens. But also, uh, almost uh, the half of the sample as an entactogen. So uh, the conclusion for me is that uh, although we used to say that uh, tryptamines or uh, phenylethylamines are hallucinogen or, or are entactogen. Uh, in reality, at last, each drug uh, can be classified into different uh, uh, places uh, regarding their uh, psychoactive effects. And the other interesting thing is that being classified by uh, 23 people as an hallucinogen, only six of, six of them uh, reported suffer hallucinations. So again, the subjects are quite able to classify drugs uh, and to um, discriminate uh, and understand what uh, different effects are uh, in relationship with uh, what uh, pharmacological classification. Well, regarding uh, duration effects, uh, 2CA was the, 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 the longest, uh, has the longest duration, and the peak effects uh, will uh, 2CB uh, reach at almost two hours, and they are quite similar. Step 2CA, that is the, the drug with longer uh, effect, uh, that reaches uh, the peak effect at five hours, more or less. Well, summarizing, uh, 2CB is a manageable drug. Increased visual perception as other hallucinogens has a reduced power to induce hallucinations. Cognition is poorly affected. It's a sociable drug, at least in uh, recreational settings. And at the same time, it seems not to induce entactogenic effects. So I will try to uh, speculate a little bit more. Uh, Regarding or taking in account this profile, maybe in visual perception studies, uh, is maybe it could be a very interesting drug uh, to in research in visual perception studies because maybe it's not being affected by emotional bias. We know that psilocybin, by example, uh, have some some bias, some emotional bias. Uh, people is able to recognize each year under the face of psilocybin uh, positive words and uh, spend more time in recognized uh, negative words and well this may be uh, a bias if you uh, want to study pure uh, perceptual states maybe uh, it could be also a drug uh, a very interesting drug in basic hallucinogen drug research because it seems to be a quite manageable drug maybe in analytical psychotherapy could be of interest because it lacks of that entactogenic effect so to uh, see was used in psychotherapy in the in the 70s and the 80s and uh, maybe this one was of the utilities 
I think that it was also used in bodywork therapy, maybe because, as our, our subject said, sense of thoughts and perception of our own body are enhanced. And again, in some of those uh, superscale and involution is similar to MDMA, so again, it's a manageable drug. And maybe in combination with MDMA could be also a drug of in, uh, a very interesting drug. In fact, we have already approved a study in our uh, laboratory where we are, will be administered MDMA uh, and 2CB separated and in combination, it will try to uh, try to uh, have some more definitive conclusion regarding these speculations that I've been said here. Uh, finally, I want to give thanks to the, the other people that work in these studies, Fernando Caudevilla, Jordi Riva, Mireia Ventura, Deborah Gonzalez, Marie Far Maggi Farrea, and Manuel Barbanoj in memoriam. And uh, I would like to dedicate this talk to Alexander Sulcin. And thank you for your attention. Thank you.